Nursing Assessment Hematological System Chapter 30 from the Lewis Textbook Review from Class Hematopoiesis simply means blood cell production, and it's the process of formation and development of the various types of blood cells and other formed elements. Normal erythropoiesis is a formation or production of red blood cells. This is showing the breakdown of fibrin. It is usually by an enzymatic action of plasmin. This is also known as the clot dissolving portion of the coagulation process. Hemolysis is literally the destruction of the red blood cells. A health history for the hematic poetic system consists of demographic data, current health, past health history, past and current use of medications, surgical history, herbal preparations, and nutritional supplements would also include family health history and review of systems using functional health patterns. A complete medical history should include the use of prescriptions, over-the-counter drugs, vitamins, herbal products, and dietary supplements, as many have the potential to interfere with normal hematologic function. Herbal therapy can interfere with clotting. Antineoplastic and antiretroviral agents may cause bone marrow depression. Previous chemotherapy, particularly alkylating agents, puts a patient at a higher risk for developing secondary malignancies of leukemia or lymphoma. For a surgical history, ask the patient about specific past surgical procedures because the duodenum is where iron absorption occurs. Partial or total gastrectomy removes parietal cells, which reduces the intrinsic factor needed for the absorption of cobalamin also known as B12. Gastric bypass means that the duodenum may be bypassed and parietal cell surface area decreased. It's important to know if they had an ileal resection because that's where cobalamin absorption takes place. Ask the patient about the number of previous blood transfusions and possible complications because the risk of transfusion reactions and iron overload increases with the number of blood transfusions. Look to see if there's a familial history of sickle cell disease, hemophilia, and clotting disorders. Tactfully assess for risk factors such as alcohol, illicit drugs, and cigarette use. Alcohol is caustic to the GI mucosa and can cause GI bleeding, esophageal varices, and decreased absorption of cobalamin and other nutrients resulting in vitamin deficiencies. Chronic alcoholism can damage platelet function and the liver, affecting the production of clotting factors and leading to bleeding problems. Functional health patterns can include assessing the urinary output, diarrhea, blood in the urine, stool, and history of black tarry stools, recent hemocult or colonoscopy. Assess for symptoms of tiredness, weakness, complaints of heavy extremities. Also assess for apathy, malaise, dyspnea, or palpitations. Cognitive perceptual pattern, like arthralgia, joint pain, may indicate an autoimmune disorder, such as rheumatoid arthritis, and may be caused by gout secondary to increased uric acid production as a result of a hematologic malignancy or hemolytic anemia. Aching bones may result from pressure of expanding bone marrow with diseases such as leukemia. Hemoarthrosis, which is blood in the joint, occurs in patients with bleeding disorders and can be painful. Self-perception and role relationship pattern could be to assess the effect of certain problems like bruising, petechiae, and lymph node swelling on a patient's personal appearance. A person who has been exposed to radiation as a treatment modality or by accident has a higher incident of certain hematologic problems. The same is true of a person who has been exposed to chemicals like benzene, lead, naphthalene, betobutazone, which are commonly used by potters, dry cleaners, and individuals involved with occupations that use adhesives. Ask the patient about a history in the military. Many Vietnam veterans were exposed to a dioxin-containing defoliant known as Agent Orange, which has been linked with leukemia and lymphoma. Sexually reproductive patterns obtain a careful menstrual history from women, including the age at which menarche and menopause began, duration and amount of bleeding, incidents of clotting and cramping, and any other problems. Ask men if they have any problems related to impotence, because this is not uncommon in men with hematologic problems. Looking at the assessment data. Disorders of the hematologic system can manifest in different ways. Lymph nodes are distributed throughout the body. Superficial lymph nodes can be evaluated by light palpation. Deep lymph nodes cannot be palpated and are best evaluated by radiological examination. Lymph nodes should be assessed symmetrically with regard to location, size in centimeters, degree of fixation, whether it's movable or fixed, tenderness, and texture. 
To assess superficial lymph nodes, lightly palpate the nodes using the pads of the fingers and then gently roll the skin over the area and concentrate on feeling for possible lymph node enlargement. Ordinarily, lymph nodes are not palpable in adults. If a lymph node is palpable, it should be small, 0.5 to 1 centimeter, mobile, firm, and non-tender to be considered a normal finding. A node that is tender, hard, fixed, or enlarged, regardless if it's tender or not, is an abnormal finding and it warrants further investigation. Tender nodes are usually a result of inflammation, whereas hard or fixed nodes suggest malignancy. Ask about any lumps or swelling in the neck, armpits, or groin. Lymph nodes that are enlarged and tender are usually associated with an acute infection. In patients with road blood cell disorders, the skin may be pale or have pasty skin tones or have a cyanotic tinge in severe anemia. Erythrocytosis often produces small vessel occlusions causing a purple mottled appearance of the face, nose, fingers, or toes. Clubbing of the fingers can be seen with chronic anemia, such as in patients with sickle cell disease. Leukocyte disorders may cause infectious skin or malignant nodular lesions. These can occur anywhere and have a variable distribution pattern. Look carefully for petechiae, ecchymosis, and spider nevus because these can indicate bleeding disorders. Salicylates interfere with platelet function and can lead to petechiae and ecchymosis. Anti-seizure drugs can cause anemia. Oral contraceptives increase the clotting risk. In general, skin and mucosal bleeding indicates a platelet disorder, whereas spontaneous bleeding into joints or muscles indicates a coagulation factor problem. Excessive bleeding from trauma can be due to either or both. Hematemesis is a symptom of an underlying problem and should always be investigated. Peptic ulcer disease is a common cause. Determine if the patient has a fever, recurring fevers, chills, or night sweats. Cardiovascular disorders such as valvular disease or hypertension may predispose patients to hemolysis. Pulmonary disorders can lead to hypoxemia, may cause chronic stimulation of the erythropoietin and result in polycythemia. Red blood cells are known as erythrocytes, contain hemoglobin and transport oxygen. A patient with a decreased erythropoietin level will have a decrease in hemoglobin. Since hemoglobin carries oxygen, a patient would have a deficit in oxygen. Administering oxygen can help alleviate the shortness of breath that can occur with a low hemoglobin level. The most direct means of evaluating the hematologic system is through lab analysis, such as a complete blood count. A peripheral smear is used to look at the morphology, the shape and appearance of their blood cells. A shift to the left indicates that the number of immature polymorphonuclear neutrophils, or bands, is elevated and is a sign of severe infection. Although the status of each cell type is important, the entire system can be disrupted by diseases as well as by the treatment of the diseases. Pancytopenia is a decrease in the number of red blood cells, resulting in anemia, decreased white blood cells, also known as leukopenia, and decreased platelets, known as thrombocytopenia. Normal values of some red blood cell tests are based on body mass, and they're different for men and women. Anemia, hemorrhage, and states of hemodilution, such as those that occur when the fluid volume is excessive, can reduce red blood cell results. Increases in red blood cell tests are found in polycythemia or in states of hemoconcentration, which can develop from volume depletion, such as dehydration. Hematocrit determines the percentage of red blood cells compared with the total blood volume. The hematocrit value generally is about three times the hemoglobin value. Red blood cell indices are special indicators that reflect red blood cell volume, color, and hemoglobin saturation and can provide insight into the cause of the anemia. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate, also known as ESR or SED rate, measures the sedimentation or settling of the red blood cells and is used as a non-specific measure of many diseases, especially inflammatory conditions. A reticulocyte count represents immature red blood cells and it should be less than 2% of the total circulating number of red blood cells. An increase indicates that the patient has a loss of blood that exceeds the bone marrow's capacity to synthesize and release mature red blood cells. White blood cell elevation does not necessarily predict the severity of illness, but it can provide clues to the etiology of health problems like infection, inflammation, tissue injury or death, and malignancies like leukemia and lymphoma. A low white blood count, leukopenia, 
is associated with bone marrow depression, severe or chronic illness, and some types of leukemia. The differential white count identifies a percentage of different types of white cells within the circulating blood. The white blood cell differential is of considerable significance because it is possible for the total white blood cell count to remain essentially normal despite a marked change in one type of leukocyte. When there is a low lymphocyte count, an absolute lymphocyte count may be tabulated. Red blood cells that have an inadequate number is an indication of anemia. Iron deficiency, you could see a loss of the papilla of the tongue occurs with chronic iron deficiency. MCV, the mean corpuscular volume is low when the red blood cells are smaller than normal. The mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration is the measurement of the average concentration of hemoglobin in a red blood cell. The mean corpuscular hemoglobin is a measurement of the average weight of hemoglobin in a red blood cell. Hypochromic red blood cells results in a low mean corpuscular hemoglobin. Hypercropic red blood cells is anemia characterized by an increase in the ratio of the weight of hemoglobin to the volume of the red blood cells. Normal chromic is a descriptive term applied to red blood cells within a normal concentration of hemoglobin. Hypochromic red blood cells are characterized by a disproportionate reduction of red cell hemoglobin and an increased area of central pallor in the red cells. Low levels of hemoglobin in the RBCs and hypochromic RBCs results in a low mean corpuscular hemoglobin. People who have pernicious anemia cannot absorb enough B12 from their food. This is because they lack intrinsic factor, a protein made in the stomach. A lack of this protein leads to vitamin B12 deficiency. Extremity numbness is associated with the B12 deficiency or pernicious anemia. A vitamin B12 deficiency anemia is a low red blood cell count due to the lack of vitamin B12. Anemia is a condition in which the body does not have enough healthy red blood cells and the red blood cells provide oxygen to body tissues. Neutropenia is an abnormally low count of neutrophils and occurs when the bone marrow does not produce enough neutrophils, neutropenia occurs. White blood cells that can help the immune system fight off infections, particularly the bacteria and fungi. Between 45 and 70% of all white blood cells are neutrophils. The lower the neutrophil count, the more vulnerable to infectious diseases. If the patient has severe neutropenia, fewer than 500, bacteria normally present in the mouth and digestive tract can cause infections. Patients with neutropenia are at a higher risk for infection when exposed to other patients in the hospital. Pathogens are much higher in the hospital than in a patient's home environment. Although chemotherapy may be stopped with severe neutropenia, which is a neutrophil count, again, less than 500, these patients may be taught to self-administer filagrastin injections, which can usually allow chemotherapy to continue. Since neutropenic patients are at high risk for infection and sepsis, they should be monitored frequently for signs of infection. Scleral jaundice is associated with hemolysis, gum bleeding, and tenderness that occurs with thrombocytopenia or neutropenia. Platelets are the smallest cells in the blood. They're formed in the red bone marrow and some are stored in the spleen. Platelets are dish-shaped, contain no hemoglobin, and are essential for the coagulation of blood and in the maintenance of hemostasis. Normal platelet counts are between 150,000 and 400,000. Counts below 100,000 signify thrombocytopenia, a condition in which bleeding may occur. Spontaneous hemorrhage is possible once platelet counts fall below 10,000. Thrombocytosis is defined as excessive platelets, a disorder that occurs with inflammation and some malignant disorders. The most likely complication related to thrombocytosis is excessive clotting. Disorders of primary hemostasis include thrombocytopenia. A total number of circulating platelets is greatly reduced, and as a result of a decreased platelet count, a patient is at great risk for bleeding. Therapeutic management. If cause is bone marrow suppression, it's watchful waiting, protective measures, and because of this, anticoagulants may not necessarily be given. Also, IM or subcutaneous injections should be avoided because of the risk for bleeding. A soft toothbrush could be used for oral care. Remember to look for the complication versus the expectation of a disease process. If they're having difficulty arousing a patient, it might indicate a cerebral hemorrhage. This is a complication. Bruising is an expectation. Platelet transfusions are not usually indicated until a platelet count is below 10 to 20,000, unless the patient is actively bleeding. If causes accelerated platelet destruction by drugs, then they need to stop the drug. 
If immune-mediated, they may need corticosteroids, a splenectomy, or IVIG. Hemolytic uremic syndrome is a condition that results from the abnormal premature destruction of red blood cells. Once this process begins, the damaged red blood cells start to clog the filtering system in the kidneys, which may eventually cause the life-threatening kidney failure associated with hemolytic uremic syndrome. Most cases occur after an E. coli infection, but often the cause is obscure and many times unknown. Prothrombin time, PT, is testing used to determine whether Coumadin is at a therapeutic level. Partial thromoplastin time, PTT, is used to determine whether heparin is at a therapeutic level. International normalized ratio, or INR, is an index of blood coagulability. Fibrin degradation products is useful in diagnosis of problems such as disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC. PT and INR are most commonly used to treat for therapeutic levels of warfarin and warfarin therapy does increase the INR. The normal range is between 0.7 to 1.8, and therapeutic warfarin levels, depending on the indication of the disorder, should maintain the INR between 1.5 and 3. When the effects of warfarin are no longer present, the INR returns to normal levels. Warfarin therapy does not affect the white blood cell count, serum ferritin levels, or reticulocyte count. The laboratory tests used in evaluating iron metabolism and differentiating anemias include measuring serum levels of iron, total iron binding capacity, serum ferritin, and transferrin saturation. Serum iron is a measurement of the amount of protein-bound iron circulating in the serum. The total iron binding capacity provides a measurement of all proteins that act to bind or transport iron between the tissues and bone marrow. Transferrin saturation is a better indicator of the availability of iron for the erythropoiesis than serum iron because, unlike serum iron, the iron bound to transferrin is readily available for the body to use. Under normal conditions, the serum ferritin concentration correlates closely with body iron stores. In normal patients, 1 nanogram per ml of ferritin corresponds to 8 to 10 milligrams of stored iron. Radiological studies for the hematology system involve primarily the use of CT or MRI for evaluating the spleen, liver, and lymph nodes. Biopsy procedures specific to hematologic assessment are bone marrow examination and lymph node biopsy. In general, these procedures are done because a peripheral blood smear is nonspecific and usually a diagnosis cannot be established from a peripheral blood smear. A biopsy also provides additional information about a hematologic problem that is needed for diagnostic purposes as well as planning treatment options. It can be accomplished either by an open biopsy or a closed needle biopsy. Only a positive result is adequate for confirming a diagnosis. A negative result may be a reflection of a sample, not necessarily a diagnostic indicator. Bone marrow examination is important in the evaluation of many hematologic disorders. The examination of the marrow may involve aspiration only if aspiration with a biopsy. The preferred site for both aspiration and biopsy of bone marrow is the posterior iliac crest. After a bone marrow aspiration and biopsy, the site must be assessed frequently on the day of the procedure and for several days after. Patients can experience some discomfort or pain and can require a mild analgesic. The presence or absence of one or both of the two inherited blood groups, antigens, is the basis for the four blood groups, A, B, AB, and O. Blood group antigens A and B are found only on RBC membranes. Blood group A has A antigens. Group B has B antigens. Group AB has both antigens, and group O has neither A nor B antigens. Each person has antibodies in the serum termed anti-A and anti-B that react with A or B antigens. These antibodies are found when the corresponding antigen is absent from the red blood cell surface. Blood reactions based on ABO incompatibilities results from intravascular hemolysis of the RBCs. RBC agglutinate, or clump, when a serum antibody is present to react with the antigens on the RBC membrane.